We're going to have our fourth speaker, who is a comedian. Danny Stinson is a regular storyteller and comedian, as I said, whose reviews have been described equally parts terrifying and hilarious. And he is also a psychiatric nurse and loves the film Point Break. Please make Danny, <laughs> Danny feel welcome. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I do love Point Break. That is a fact. Yeah, I hear a few, yeah? All right, good. Well, you are in for a treat because hang on to your test tubes. Shit's about to get real. As we delve into the life of Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, Born in 1918 in an area of New York City referred to as the Bronx, he was born as Joseph Schneider. Alarm bell one, name change. <laughs> Some, something's going on. That's already alarm bell one. He was born uh, with, with a really bad stutter and ended up getting a master's degree in speech therapy. That's, that's fine, there's nothing with that, that seems cool. He also had a club foot that kept him out of World War II, which he was very bitter about, but it didn't stop him from one of his other loves of folk dancing, <laughs> which everyone else was very bitter about. <laughs> Sydney, uh, he left the College of New York first for Arkansas Polytechnic Institute, then for the University of Wisconsin. He graduated with honors and a chemistry degree in 1940. He then earned a doctorate in biochemistry from the California Institute of Technology. Smart dude. Like, it's, it's all going well so far. It's all going well. In 1951, at the age of 33, he joined the Central Intelligence Agency, commonly referred to as the CIA. Probably alarm bell too. <laughs> That's where it, where it too. So he joined and he headed the chemical division of technical services staff and he soon became known as the Black Sorcerer and the Dirty Trickster. They were his nicknames. If you have someone at work nicknamed the Black Sorcerer or the Dirty Trickster, don't leave your shit in the fridge. That's another, number three, just, it's not worth doing. So, and what he was basically recruited to do was to take over some experiments in mind control. Now, it wasn't the American government's first attempt to establish a mind control program. There had been a, an operation beforehand, but it was run by the Joint Intelligent Objectives Agency, and it was called Operation Paperclip. Now, Operation Paperclip, it was never really established who it was led on from, but let's just say that some of the notes had Nazi written all over them. If you're studying any project or you're doing any research and you see the word Nazi keeps coming up again and again, don't, don't even phone the union, just go. There's no need to check that. Just go. That's alarm bell. What are we up to? That's like alarm bell three. Four. Alarm bells are ringing, guys. I'm scared. And we should be. Halloween has come and been, but this shit is forever. So... <laughs> So, in April of 1953, the CIA established Project MK Ultra. Now, Sydney was placed as the chief of MK Ultra, and basically, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quote about what MK Ultra, what they what they were tasked to do. So, MK Ultra used numerous methodologies to manipulate people's mental states, alter brain functions, including the administration of drugs, mainly lysergic acid diethylamide, commonly known as LSD or acid. Hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, as well as various forms of physical torture were also applied. Again, if your boss is asking you what you think about torture, just go. <laughs> the union don't need to get involved. No one needs to get involved. Just leave. That's a alarm bell. What are we? Five. Five. Yeah, we are. Okay, so the first of these LSD experiments... Uh, <laughs> Sydney was into it. He was into it. He would, he'd reportedly taken the drug hundreds of times. And he used to use LSD for brainstorming sessions. Many of the brainstorming sessions unsurprisingly came up with ideas that were use more acid. <laughs> the ideas were said to be not well thought out. And he clearly felt that LSD held... 
it, it was the key to uh, the, the, the mind control experiments and, and, and it was the key to having people do things against their will or even using, uh, even during interrogation so that you could get them to speak about things that they wouldn't normally speak about. Now, one of the things that they, they did as, as one of their experiments, if you can call it that, in Kentucky, they administered mentally ill people, LSD, one guy for 147 days straight. <laughs> Surprisingly, his mental state didn't improve. Not an experiment. Not an experiment. I could have told you that. <laughs> Come to me first, Sydney. Come to me first. One of the other things they did, oh, they, they administered it to, to prisoners, to CIA employees, basically anyone in the vicinity. They gave acid. Now, they also started Operation Midnight Climax in which the, several, the CIA set up several brothels, okay? They set up several brothels in San Francisco and the idea was that they would administer um, men that used the brothels LSD and then get them to try to admit what they had done. But it didn't stop there. They gave the men LSD, they gave the prostitutes LSD, basically everyone in the building they gave LSD. Again, not an experiment. <laughs> That's watching people on acid have sex. That's not. <laughs> so, in March 1960, under the, the Cuban project, it was a CIA plan that was approved by President Eisenhower. Now, it was known beforehand that Fidel Castro was going to give one of his regular TV addresses to the people of Cuba. So, in comes Sydney. Sydney's idea, cover a TV studio in acid. <laughs> a whole TV studio in acid. And the idea was that Fidel Castro would be affected by the acid and he would appear weak and confused and the people of Cuba would not trust him. One person died, not Castro. <laughs> and several others were said to be mentally impaired to the point that they were retired from work. Yeah, I told you shit was going to get real. I told you to hold on to those test tubes. But then things got silly. Undeterred, Sydney proposed further plots to assassinate Castro by using a poisoned cigar, a poisoned wetsuit, an exploding seashell, and a poisoned fountain pen. Enough with the poison, Sydney. He's gone poison mad, hasn't he? If it's not the acid, it's the poison. It's not known if any of these were put into action, but if they were, they all failed. Castro didn't die. So... He, Sydney also played a role in the CIA's attempt to assassinate Prime Minister Patrice Lubada of the Congo. Again, at President Eisenhower's request, he took a vial of poison to the Congo with the plans to place it on Lumbada's toothbrush. He transported these poisons to the CIA station chief in Congo. The station chief in Congo told him, there's a military coup. President Lumbada's already been outed. Like, there's no, what are, you, what are you doing here? I'm not doing that. <laughs> it turned out that if Sydney had have phoned, read a report from the area or a newspaper, he would have known that. <laughs> so, President MK Ultra, it was first brought to the public attention in 1975 by the Church Committee uh, of the US Congress and a Gerald Ford Commission to investigate CIA activities within the United States. Investigative efforts, however, were hampered by the fact that CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all MKUltra files destroyed. However, in 1977, a Freedom of Information Act found that 20,000 files relating to MKUltra had been misplaced in another government agency and were just sitting there. I love the idea that the CIA is no better at filing than Vic Rhodes. <laughs> One of these secret memorandums was uh, found granting the MK Ultra director, or Sydney, as we've come to know him, a budget for the fiscal year of 1953 estimated at 10 million US dollars. Adjusted for today's inflation, that's 87.5 million dollars for one year. MK Ultra ran for two decades.
20 years. <laughs> Overall, 149 experiments in mind control were known to have been conducted at least 25 without the person's knowledge. Or not person, without the group of people's. Imagine the day at work. You get home and you're like, oh, how was the day? Oh, it was pretty good, honey. I, uh, I had a coffee with Sydney and then I ended up, I, I was talking to this, uh, this monkey with an eye patch and <laughs> everything just felt really purple and we listened to the doors for like six hours. It was, So known to have participated in the MK Ultra experiments were 44 American colleges or universities, 15 research foundations, chemical and pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies, including Sandoz, Novartis and Eli Lilly. Sound familiar? Yeah, it should, because they're currently making all your medications. <laughs> there were also uh, 12 hospitals or clinics and three prisons involved. <laughs> the CIA eventually acknowledged that the MK Ultra test made little to no sense because the scientific, uh, or because the agents observing and monitoring them had no scientific background. Again, it was just people watching people on acid. <laughs> That's basically the whole thing. Sydney retired from the CIA in 1972. At his retirement, he dismissed the entire effort of the CIA's MK Ultra program as useless, stating at the time he did not believe his work had been effective. He was, however, awarded the Distinguished Intelligent Medal from the US government. On March the 7th, 1999, Sydney died at his home in Washington. Oh. He, uh, he was reported to have a history of heart issues. However, his wife declined to state the cause of death. Probably tripping balls from the set, <laughs> if it's anything to go by, Sid. But as a special tribute to Sydney tonight, uh, in the break, everybody's drink has been spiked with acid. So uh, everybody's going to have a good rest of the night. Cheers, guys.